you, Jesus. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I feel that. Not only is it raining on the outside, the Holy Ghost is raining on the inside. Hallelujah. And if you can get past just this is just another meeting where we showed up. Honey, you showed up for a reason. I did too. And it's to see and to seek after God and to worship God. And, and when we get to pursuing God, you'll find him. Amen. Thank you, Brother Hardwick. And thank you for you guys showing up. It'd be crazy for me to try to preach to an empty church. But I'm so full of this message, I think I'd do it. I feel the Holy Ghost, and I know God's going to pour out His Spirit. And I'm telling you, I, I've got, I feel like the prophet that went down and saw much of nothing but dead, dry bones. And God said, preach here. I'm telling you, if you weren't here, I'd preach to the chairs right now because God is wanting to do something. And I feel a message, and I'm going to be preaching, this is that. This is the second part of our series. The first part of our series is we were talking about the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, the land of your promise. When you leave where you've been and you move forward in God, God's going to change some things in your life. And now I want to preach the second part of this message about the Holy Ghost. What is this? What's going on in this church? This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel saying, In the last days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. You may be seated. This is that. Peter with the other apostles, stands up. There's a visible move of the Holy Ghost. There is a, an unction, a, a supernatural, a, a great wind begins to blow in a room where the doors are closed. Everybody's in one place and one accord, and, and they've all been told to go, go, go tarry at Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And so they're like, I'm not sure what that means, but he told me to do it, and I'm going to do it. And so they all show up. They all get in one accord, and the Bible says the day of Pentecost had fully come, and all of a sudden, supernatural things start happening. Ooh, I feel that right now. Supernatural things, miracles, signs, visitations begin to happen because the fire of the Holy Ghost sets up on top of people, which freaks people out. I mean, how would you like a fire on top of your head? Doesn't work so well. But it's just like the fire. It's the same fire that got a hold of the bush in the, in the desert. Moses stopped and said, what's going on? The fire's in this bush, but the bush isn't burning. That same fire from the Old Testament showed up on the day of Pentecost. Uh, that fire fell on the people, and they began to speak with other tongues as God gave them the utterance. Uh, they began to act crazy. They began to act drunk. They, they weren't standing quite right. They weren't saying things quite right. Their ties were all crooked. Their, their shirts were, they, they were all messed up. And then they began to speak in, in different languages that they didn't know. And the Bible says this was noised abroad. You talk about noised abroad. Hey, there's something going on in that upper room. I don't know what it is, but something's going on. And they began to figure out, well, I've seen drunk people before. Well, they were right and they were wrong. They were drunk, but they weren't drunk like you suppose. They'd been, Jew, they'd been hanging out at Jehovah's Bar. They'd been getting some of that new wine that God had. Woo! That, that wine didn't come from the Napa Valley. It came from heaven. Woo! I'm telling you, I'm fired up. 
Thank you, Jesus. If you need the Holy Ghost, tonight is your night. I am preaching that this is that. This is that. This is that. That Holy Ghost that we've been preaching about, that you see people moving and responding to the Word of God. What is that? That is the Holy Ghost. This is that. Woo! Peter, under the unction of the Holy Ghost, declares what's going on is a fulfillment of prophecy. There was the move of God upon Joel years before this had ever happened. And he, he began to say, there's, there's going to be some strange things begin to happen, but it's going to be in the will of God. Now, let's switch to Paul. Paul was a man who was passionate about his religion. He believed everything that could be believed. He sat at the feet of Gamaliel. He was like a doctor of religious law. He was, he, when he got before the council, he appealed to the Pharisees. Hey, I'm one of you guys. He knew the Bible. He knew the Old Testament. But he was a wicked man. You can know the Bible. You can be passionate about the Bible and not know the God of the Bible. There are people that are passionate about doing things for their God. And they got all kind of names for all kind of gods. But there's only one God. There's only one way. There's only one truth. One faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is in you all and above all. So Paul was sitting there and Stephen gets up and they raised a ruckus. They didn't like what Stephen was doing. They liked what he was doing. They just didn't like his preaching. And they decided to stone Stephen because he was preaching something that wasn't politically correct. Don't tell me about cancel culture. It's been around a long time, honey. They wanted to cancel Stephen to the fact, to the point that they did. They took up stones and stoned him to death. And you know who's holding the coats of the people? Paul. That same Paul we find out in Acts 9, 1, 2. Paul or Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord. This guy was all into it. He was sold out to the cause. He went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, to the churches, that if any were found of this way, what way? This way that we're talking about, that Holy Ghost, apostolic, tongue-talking, holy rolling bunch. If they're in this church, we got to get them out of here. And he said, if I find them, I'm going to grab them because I've got authority from the priest. I've got my bases covered, and I'm going to kill every last one of them. That was Saul. Now, how much further can you go to being a bad dude? Somebody bust in here in church. All right, you apostolics, up against the wall. I'm putting you in chains, and I'm dragging you back, and you'll never see your home again. Apostolics, Pentecostals, Holy Ghost, tongue talking. What's all that? That's not, uh, get, get, get them out of here. That was Saul. And he'd already done it. This wasn't an idle threat. This guy knew what he was doing, and he was good at it. And he's on the way to Damascus that if he found anybody, whether they were men or women, it was equal opportunity, baby, man or woman, boy or girl, that he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And I want to talk to you because I feel like the Lord spoke to me very clearly. There are people in this room that won't let the Holy Ghost flow through them because they feel like they've gone too far. They've done too much. And God could never use me. God could never fill me with the Holy Ghost. I could never be repent. I could never be forgiven of my sins. Oh, honey. You haven't gone too far. 
yes, you've lied. So have I. You've stole. Can I get a witness? All right, don't raise your hands on this one. You slept with someone you wasn't supposed to. You hurt your reputation. You hurt their reputation. You damaged your family, your family's name. You destroyed someone else's property. You got a hold of something that got a hold of you, and, and now you're addicted. You're addicted to perversion, or you're addicted to a substance, or you're addicted to something that's got a hold of you, and, and you've tried to, to stop it, and you can't stop it, because as soon as you stop, it comes back, and, and you can't stop the addiction. That's why it's called an addiction. You are in a vicious cycle. You may feel that you can't break out of the trap. What is it? You've gone too far. That's a lie. Ooh, that's a lie. That's nothing but a lie. The fact that you're in this church building, the fact that you're hearing the word of God, the fact that God hasn't taken you off of planet earth means there's still hope for you. Maybe you've wasted too much of your life. You've wasted too much time. And now you feel like, God, I've, I've missed my calling. And, and now I don't feel like I have time to do what you've asked me to do. I don't have time to fulfill the work and the calling on, on, on my life. And, and I've gone too far and, and it's all over for me. Or opportunity knocked and you were at Taco Bell. You missed your opportunity somehow. That other person got the promotion. That other person got the, the, the job. And, and, and the other person found that they were in the right place at the right time. Or how about this one? You failed God. You said you were going to live for God. And then months later, days later, weeks later, maybe hours later, you find yourself doing things you know you're not supposed to. And there's some, something that gets on your shoulder and begins to tell you, see, there's nothing to that Holy Ghost. That's a lie. That's the father of lies that, that, tells me, that tells me that the accuser of the brethren is still active. And that's his job is to tell you, you ain't got it. But I'm here to tell you, I've got it. I've got it. Woo! I've got it. I've got it. There's something about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I've got it. I've got it. Woo! And I'm going to tell you something else. You can have it. You can have it. You can have it. You can have it. Oh, there's something about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but you can have it. Yeah. Woo. You may find yourself on death's door one day where you're not sure how many heartbeats you've got left. Or more, maybe you've got a gasp of air. Maybe you've run from God. God told you to go do this, and you went the other direction. Ha <laughs> ha, you're in good company. There was a guy named Jonah that did the same thing, and God didn't throw him away either. You refused to listen. You knew what was right, and you did what was wrong. You've gone too far, the lie is. Or how about this? You know what abuse is. You've been abused, or maybe you were the abuser. You were damaged, or maybe you damaged someone else. You were violated. Maybe you violated. Now you can't feel anything. Your emotions are all over the place because I can't feel anything. I've been hurt so much. I've got so many scars on my heart. I can never open up and trust anything or anybody again. That's a lie because the Bible says that he will never leave you nor forsake you, that he will love you with an unfailing love, that he will forgive you. How about this one? You don't even know if God is real. 
I go to church. I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. But is this stuff real? Are y'all all just, you know, <laughs> y'all just making this stuff up? I've had doubts. Is this real? Is the Bible true? I mean, really? An ark floated and everybody died except eight people? I mean, fire fell down from heaven and burned Sodom and Gomorrah? I mean, is that really what happened? Yeah, it really did. You mean the Bible's like, really, you know? Yeah, it really is. Well, I don't know if I believe that. I mean, science says, well, science says a lot of things, but the Word of God will never change. It's settled yesterday, today, forever. It won't change. It's the same yesterday. It still works today. And tomorrow, honey, it'll still work tomorrow. You've questioned why God would allow that to happen to you. Or why would God allow your loved one to die? Your baby, your mom, your spouse. You've said some terrible things to God when no one else was listening. You cussed God out. Said, I'll never believe you again. If you ever, you know what I'm talking about. I'm preaching to somebody right now. You haven't gone too far, baby. I've heard people say that the church building would suddenly ignite and catch on fire if they were to walk in it. Well, honey, this old church has been through the fire and it's been through the flood. I'm here to tell you that it's too late to worry about fire in the church house. Honey, it's already on fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost is still putting out. Matthew 16, 18 says that on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of a city deals with the seat of government. That's where all the stuff, the courts were in the gates and the councils of hell and the, the authority of hell and the decisions of hell will not and cannot prevail against God's church. It's been through the flood. <laughs> and the flood couldn't drown it. I said it's been through the fire. And the fire couldn't burn it. There were evil men, dictators, politicians, kings that put their life mission on destroying the Bible and destroying the church. And let me tell you what happened. They died, but the Word of God kept going. You can't stop what God started. His Word is true. Heaven and earth will pass away before the slightest thing from God's Word will stop. The Lord has built this church himself. And honey, it'll take more than the likes of you to stop it. You know something about rocks? When the church is built on the rock, rocks don't burn, baby. So we're in the last days. We're looking at the end of the age. We're looking at a political situation where <laughs> if you've been paying attention at all for any a length of time, there's turmoil in our political system. And it's not the right time to have a move of God. It's not the right time for revival. I'm too busy. School's about to start. I can't do that right now. Matthew 24, 37 says, But as the days of Noah were, so also shall the coming of man be. Luke 17, 28 said, Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. And that's the, the, the environment. That's the, the last days. That's the promise that when all these things begin to happen, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. And so I want to take us back to the chaos 
of Acts chapter 2. I don't know if the world could be more evil than it was at that particular point. Jesus Christ, robed in flesh, God Almighty, a man appointed and anointed to do miracles among the people. The political leaders didn't like him. The religious leaders didn't like him. Nobody liked him except the common people did. And he was famous. He did great things all over. But fame is fickle. Because some of the same people that saw Jesus heal and divide bread and do miracles were some of the same people calling out, crucify him. Don't ever hold on to a crowd. That, that's where you get your fulfillment from. No, you need to hold on to God. And so it's in the environment of we literally put Jesus Christ to death. We crucified him. And that is the environment where Acts chapter 2 happens. The day of Pentecost comes. The church is hiding underground. They're not sure what's happening. The, the body, the person, the, 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 the guy that walked around that broke bread with them, he just got killed. They put him on a cross. And now the religious leaders are looking for you. But there was a command. There were thousands of people who followed Jesus in his miracles. There were fewer that followed him to the cross. And there were just 120 that followed him to the upper room. But those that did follow him to the upper room with the door shut on the day of Pentecost, this is where it began to happen. You see, God is not ever taken by surprise. God is not ever worried about what time it is. He knew exactly what time it was. And it didn't happen before the day of Pentecost. It happened on the day of Pentecost when it was fully come. The day was bright, things were happening, and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost is poured out. And so this is that. This is what's happening. So you, your situation, my situation, according to the Bible, we are in the last days. Because God has poured out his spirit in the last days. We are in chaos. We are in turmoil. We've got grouchy people. We've got cancel culture. We've got social media. We've got all kind of things going on. And that is the perfect time for revival. Because that is when the Lord said, and there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Oh, I wish somebody would help me preach right now. I said, I hear a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it's filling all the house where we were sitting. Woo! God said he would pour out. Please remain standing. God said he would pour out his spirit on all flesh. Tall flesh, short flesh, fat flesh, white flesh, Hindu, Arabic, Catholic, Pentecostal, Baptist. It doesn't matter what your label is. If you're alive, God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on you. So if you're ready for the Holy Ghost, this is revival. This is your night. I don't care how many times, how many lies have been told to you. Oh, no, you've tried before. Let me tell you, you just keep trying because God will never give up on you. God will never turn you away. When you seek him with your whole heart, you will find him. And not until you do. Well, I just wonder if there's somebody that wants the Holy Ghost. I wonder if there's somebody that wants that. This is that. The Holy Ghost in your life. If you want the Holy Ghost, come forward. We want to lay hands on you. We want you to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We want you to have an outpouring of the divine, supernatural, tongue-talking experience. Oh, it's not a card. It's not a religion. But it's an experience with God, who I feel that fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost in this place. Hallelujah. 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 I want my preachers to come up here. Come turn around. Hallelujah. If you want something, come find a preacher. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. 
This is that. What do you need? I'm more than able. I'm more than able. I am Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. I am Jehovah Rapha. I am Jehovah. I am all that you need. I am your healer. I am your deliverer. I am your savior. There's nothing that God can't do. So I want to be very clear about this. When you come, thank you, brethren, for lining up right now. When you come, this, this that we're feeling in this place, this what I'm preaching about, this is your miracle, this is your night, and I don't want you to come with your head down and say, well, I prayed for this before and it didn't happen. You've got to believe either God said what he meant or he's a liar. Let every man be a liar, but God's word is going to be true. God said I can have it and I will have it, and I will have it tonight. So whatever you need, if you need the Holy Ghost, come. Let one of these brothers pray for you. Pray for you. If you need a healing, come. Let one of these brothers pray for you. It's the same Holy Ghost. If God can fill you with the Holy Ghost, God can heal your body. If God can heal your body, God can rearrange your finances. If God can rearrange your finances, God can rearrange circumstances in your life. Times and seasons, God can change them. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare your word that you are exactly who you said you were. Pour out of your spirit in this place, God. This is that. You are in this place in a mighty way, God. And I believe you. And I declare that you have not lied. That you are the truth, the way, and the life. And so, Lord, I, I seek. I seek my miracle. I seek your spirit. I seek your Holy Ghost. I speak, I speak, thank God that you will do what you said you would do. Hallelujah. Come on. He's the God. He's the God. He's the God of impossibilities. Nothing is too hard for our God.
Thanks for joining our online worship experience. We hope it has been a blessing to you and your family. We would love to connect with you. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, or you can go to www.point.church and connect with us there. If you'd like to partner with us in giving, you could download our app, or you could go to point.church and click give. Thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to worshiping with you again soon.